So Lawbreakers released on Tuesday, and boy, it is looking not good. The headline of this article is Launchbreakers launch numbers are much lower than Battleborns. And let me tell you something, you don't want to be compared to Battleborn. What's going on guys, Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. We're going to be talking about Lawbreakers, how it's significantly underperforming on PC, maybe the reasons why it is, and if anything can be done to change that. But first, before we get into all that, I have to say, we had a very special guest on yesterday's The Xbox 2, a podcast that I do with Windows Central's Jez Corden. Uh, Mikey Bark, Xbox Corporate Vice President, joined us for an hour and 20 minute discussion about the new Xbox One guide, a host of other gaming topics, mostly about Xbox. I really recommend you guys go and check that podcast out. A lot of great information uh, from Mikey Barr from Xbox about everything. But anyways, on to the topic for this video. We're going to be talking about lawbreakers. Oh man, it has seen some problems on P. C. Now, the reviews are decent, pretty good. I've played it myself on PS4. Um, I think the game is uh, quite a lot of fun with friends. Of course, th the launch issues it had on the PS4 with the hitching and stuff, that kind of impacted uh, the, the desire to want to play the game. And I'm sure maybe that had a, a factor into maybe how well it may or may not be doing on PlayStation 4, but it's patched. But this is going to be about the PC version because we do have some numbers on it, right? So according to GITHYP, the final release for Lawbreakers saw a whopping 60% reduction over its initial beta player count. Launch night, launch night, usually like the biggest night for the game outside of maybe the first weekend, saw only a peak of 3,000 players, which is pretty bad when you compare it to Battleflop, aka Battleborn's 12,000. Um, and it doesn't look like it's just a rough start. The numbers have only gone down since. Daily lows are already dropping to below 1,000 players. And the peaks are also going down as the days go by. Um, wow. And they talk about how may this may be a long-term or it may not necessarily be a short-term issue because 1,000 people or you know, more than 1,000 people um, is fine to get a match. But how will this perform in the future? Now, there's been a lot of people talking about X, Y, and Z reasons why they think, you know, Lawbreakers isn't doing so well on PC. And I have a, for, uh, you know, a few opinions of my own. Number one, um, I don't think anybody was interested in this game in the first place, to be honest with you. Uh, the trailers did nothing to kind of uh, showcase what the game was about. And the beta numbers, which is kind of shows interest in a game nowadays since we don't get demos... Uh, they were absolutely pathetic. You could tell just from the open beta numbers on PC that there was no interest in the game. And since there's no interest in the game, you got to wonder why. Is it because of the advertising? Is it because of Cliffy B? Uh, is it because that nobody really knows what the game was about? Remember when they originally announced Lawbreakers, it was a PC-only game. And it was originally going to be free to play before they kind of 180'd and came back and said, You know what? Uh, this game is going to be pay to play obviously and thirty dollars and supporting microtransactions so you can kind of maybe point the finger at the lack of advertising or maybe the initial announcement of being free to play because that's why you know the first impressions are important and the first impression was lawbreakers was going to be a free to play game now that doesn't have any bearing on playstation because honestly playstation the game wasn't even announced for playstation until a couple months ago and it looks like the playstation version is going to do a lot to whether or not this game is saved, whether or not Boss Key can even make another game, or if they have to shut down. Now, one of the other factors I do see in Lawbreaker's low launch numbers is PUBG. PUBG has completely taken, you know, video games by storm, especially on PC. It's over 6 million sold for a game that came out only 5 months ago. Uh, it's one of the most concurrently played game on steam ever i mean outside of any valve game and this game PUBG is a juggernaut and i think i honestly do think PUBG has taken a lot of the wins a lot of the wind out of the sails of lawbreakers 
people seem to be gravitating to a PUBG and not necessarily Lawbreakers. And I think that is a big time factor. Because you can get PUBG, the gaming phenomenon, the one that people want to be in discussions about on Twitter and forums all over the place on Reddit, for the same price, basically, that you can get Lawbreakers, which doesn't seem to be any interest. Nobody really seems to be talking about it. So people are gravitating to PUBG because PUBG seems to at least be unique. I know Battle Royale games have been done before, but not to this scale. Whereas a fast-paced arena shooter, it's a dime a dozen. They've been doing them for years. So that's kind of another thing. Um, also, Overwatch. This game gets compared all the time to Overwatch. Just because, you know, when you're trying to compare games, you usually kind of take the poster child of the genre. And right now, the hero shooter, which Lawbreakers is, it is, you know, part arena shooter, part hero shooter. The king of hero shooters, and maybe the king of shooters right now outside of Call of Duty... Uh, well, the king of shooters on PC is Overwatch. And Overwatch has style. Overwatch has a distinct look. And Overwatch is played by millions of people that adore the game. To get those people to leave the come play Lawbreakers is a tough sell. Especially when Lawbreakers looks incredibly generic. Especially when you compare it to Overwatch. The characters and the whole game looks like it's ripped straight from the 90s. It's a dude bro game. None of the characters' designs are interesting when you see them in the game. When you look across the battlefield, you can't tell if that's Harrier or Wraith or whoever. But in Overwatch, you can because Overwatch's art style is unique. Lawbreakers just seems like a game ripped from the 90s. It's just completely generic. And I think, I think that does have a lot to do with... Um, the game kind of underperforming so far on PC. Now, another reason I, I honestly think is Hellblade. Now, when they Cliffy B and everybody decided to release this game on August 8th, they probably thought they'd be the only game in town, but here we have Hellblade. Granted, it is a single-player only game, but it is getting fantastic reviews. A lot of people say, hey, this game is worth experiencing, right? And I'll have a review up for that game later today. And they're both the same price, and people who don't buy the game right away, they wait and see how things turn out. They hear Lawbreakers has issues on PS4. And then they see Lawbreakers, you know, is kind of not doing very well on PC. And they look, you know what? They see Hellblade right there next to it. Maybe they decide to spend their $30 on, on Hellblade instead of Lawbreakers. That is an issue. I know some people will say they're not really the same genre. But everything competes for your money. If you're in the market for two games, but you can only afford one, and you choose Hellblade, well, that's not a sale for Lawbreakers. And then I've heard people say, you know, Cliffy B and, and the team turned their back on the Xbox user base, so this is just karma for, for them kind of, you know, shutting down or ignoring the, the, the people that got them to the dance. And, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily true whatsoever. Um, Lawbreakers is always going to live and die on its own appeal and, and gameplay. Plus, this is, we're sp specifically talking about the PC, so I don't think that really plays into a factor very much here. <sighs> and honestly, I think Cliffy B and the team at Bosky kind of misread the market. Now, they were right in saying that they, you know, hero shooters would be big, and they are. I mean, Overwatch is dominant. Rainbow Six Siege, you know, even though that game. Seems like a typical tactical shooter, which it is. Uh, that game, you could classify as a hero shooter. There's diff there are different characters you pick with different loadouts and different abilities and stuff like that. So they were right on that. I think they overestimated the appeal of fast-paced, uh, gravity-defying, uh, you know, flying through the air combat. Because if you look at what people want and what people are craving, let let's take Call of Duty for an example, right? People are sick of the double jump, the you know the the wall running, the sprint, the really fast combat of of Call of Duty. So much so that they're going back to boots on the ground. Battlefield is boots on the ground. Even Overwatch is a slower paced boots on the ground type game. There's not a lot of flying around there. I think people just want the slower paced boots on the ground action rather than the one where you're flying through the sky. So I think they misread the market 
on that one. Now, I've seen people say, hey, you know, there's it could come back. Lawbreakers could, you know, have a resurgence similar to Rainbow Six Siege. And I don't see that. I know people always point to Rainbow, which recently announced 20 million players, um, 2.3 million a day, as like, hey, if that game can do it, then any game can do it. But I think Rainbow is the exception and not the rule. Look, the shooter market is crowded. You need to stand out in this crowded market. It is the most crowded market in video games, right? And Rainbow stands out because it's unlike any other game out there. It's a very tactical shooter. There aren't many like that. But there are plenty of hero shooters. And there are plenty of fast-paced shooters. So Lawbreakers kind of falls victim to that. So I don't see a resurgence Rainbow Six style in its future. And honestly, if the numbers are this bad on PC, which they seem to be, and the numbers are bad on PS4, I know people will be like, well, they're going to bring it to Xbox, but late ports from a game to you know a system down the road don't do well either. It's not going to do well on Xbox whenever they port this game to it. A lot of Xbox fans feel betrayed by Cliffy, so they'll just not buy the game to spite him. So that game will probably fail on Xbox. It should have launched on Xbox along with PlayStation and PC to get the best bang for their buck, but they decided it was in their best interest to only focus on two platforms. Will that come back to bite them in the ass? I don't know. It may. It may. And then the other thing I see is take the game free to play. You put it free to play and people are going to be interested in playing it, which it may look like they might have to do this, but that won't necessarily save the game either because it didn't save Evolve. It didn't really save Battleborn. If there's no interest in your game initially, making it free-to-play isn't necessarily going to make people want to play it all of a sudden. It was free-to-play when there was an open beta. People tried it out, not in record numbers, which showed a lack of interest in the game. Just by making it free-to-play, nobody's going to be like, well, now I'll play it because it's free. I don't think so. I think Lawbreakers is destined to have a very small but very passionate community that really enjoys the game. And the issue is, yeah, you may be able to find games right now, but will you in a month when Destiny 2 comes out? Will you in November when Call of Duty and Star Wars Battlefront 2 come out? This game, to me, is is, is going to have a super small fan base that is incredibly skilled. So when new players do pick up the game, they're going to feel lost and they're going to get destroyed by the people who really do enjoy these type of games so honestly looking at it i don't think this game i don't think this game has a future if they put it on xbox it's going to fail if they make it free to play nobody's going to be interested in interested in it because there's no interest in the game i don't know what they could possibly do to ways to raise awareness and interest in it whatsoever and i think it failed because it's incredibly generic it came out in a market that you need to differentiate yourself in a very crowded shooter market. Overwatch is king, and a lot of comparisons to Overwatch are negative, even though the game is nothing like Overwatch. PUBG is a gaming phenomenon that came out of nowhere that people are buying in droves and would rather play than your new game that you just released. Another game, highly critically acclaimed single-player experience, just released the same day as you, and I think more people are picking that up. There are so many reasons why Lawbreakers isn't doing well right now. But I think the the biggest one was that nobody cares about There's no interest in the game whatsoever. And that should have been clear from the beta numbers. There was just no interest. And you could blame the marketing for the game. You could blame the trailers. But I think you can trace it all the way back down to that. And everything else is kind of just dominoes as they fall. So I don't think Lawbreakers has a future. So... I wouldn't be surprised if a few months we see Boss Key Productions close up shop. I don't think the game has a future, and I don't think the game's going to sell well. Now, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully, um, I don't want the game to fail. Just keep that in mind. I want it to be successful. I enjoy playing it, but looking at all this stuff, it doesn't seem to be very well. Hopefully, the PS4 can save the game Um, because it 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 is a fun game to play with your friends. Anyways, guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this look at Law- Lawbreakers and what I th- what I think about it and why I think it's kind of significantly underperforming right now. Um, 
Don't forget to check out the Xbox 2 podcast with Mike Ybarra. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more content. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later.